Hi, I'm Eric Lippert. I'm an architect on the C# -sharp analysis team at Coverity. There are a lot of different threading issues that we look for, uh, and let me describe them in uh, sort of increasing order of difficulty. Uh, a relatively easy one is what we call non-static guarding static. So the issue there is suppose you have a, a, an instance field, a non-static field that contains a lock object. And then that lock object is used in lock statements to guard access to a static field. Well, that's almost certainly the wrong thing to do, because there could be multiple instances, uh, but there's only one static field. That's the difference between a static field and an instance field. So it's like you're creating a bunch of different locks, and then you're using all of these different locks to guard access to one thing, and that doesn't make any sense. Uh, so that one's pretty straightforward. Uh, another uh, threading defect that we look for uh, is, a, is a statistical model that we, we use to find the defect. Uh, we look uh, at a bunch of fields that are used uh, under locks, and we try to come up with an association between the field and the lock object. Uh, and then once we have that, uh, we can do a statistical analysis, and we can say, well, it looks like 19 times out of 20, when this field was accessed, uh, it was accessed under a lock. Right? And then one time out of 20, the, you access the field, but you didn't use a lock. And maybe this is the lock that you should be using. Uh, and then the most complicated analysis that we do uh, looks for deadlocks. So uh, a deadlock is a situation where you have two threads. Uh, one of them takes lock A, the other one takes lock B, uh, and then while still holding lock A, the first thread requests lock B, and then the other thread, of course, requests lock A, and now you have two threads that are waiting on each other forever. Uh, and these can be quite difficult to find because the path between I took lock A and I took lock B can be quite long and tortuous. So what we do is we, uh, we do an interprocedural analysis of all of the code that takes out locks, and then we try to uh, prove whether or not there can possibly be a path uh, that causes that kind of inversion. And, and that analysis can be quite difficult.